Hey guys, my name is Eva. I work for the Fair Play Alliance in Slovakia. Um, basically, what we do is we deal in uh, we we fight we try to fight corruption. So basically, what we do is we try to check whether the politicians' behavior is fair and whether they and we try to expose the cases when they waste the taxpayers' money or when, where they uh, directly steal it. Uh, a lot of the time we do it through technologies, you know, and like everyone else, uh, are the slides going to move or? Yes, sorry, you were, <laughs> you were readier than that. Oh, sorry. No problem. I'm, so uh, a lot of the time uh, we, we do this through technologies and like many of you, sometimes we hope that it's going to work like magic, you know, and that it's going to bring the sudden enlightenment when we need it the most. And yeah, I'm saying it a bit jokingly, but then, you know, the truth is that uh, if you have the data and if you have the right know-how and if you have the skill, uh, basically there's so many things you can build with it that can help you in what we're trying to achieve. Um, so the possibilities, uh, I think, are nearly endless. For instance, we in the Fair Play Alliance are really into collecting data. We need the data for our investigative work, for our investigative reporting. And so we ask for the data. It's mostly about data about societies, grants, uh, winners of public procurements, people who are able to decide about where the money goes. And so we ask for this information. Every year, we send out around 500 Freedom of Information Act requests. And we get answers for most of them. So that's a great thing. But then there's the question, like, what do we do with it? So we process the data and we create a database out of it. And the database is public, so we give the data to other people freely to reuse it because we think it's important for other people to help us in fighting corruption and in finding uh, interesting things in the data. But you know, like, is this enough to be doing this? Uh, well, we believe it isn't. Uh, because you can give the data to other people, but in the end, first and foremost, you have to use it for your own goals, for, for fighting for what you believe in. And so uh, we use it in our own advoc advocacy work. And so, for instance, we were able to find out about people in Slovakia whose companies are uh, more lucky in getting uh, public procurements, uh, winning public pro procurements than others. And these raised quite a few eyebrows and made several people feel a bit uncomfortable because they thought that these relationships are not that visible. Or we were able to expose that one of the biggest political parties in Slovakia actually is covering up uh, thousands of, uh, uh, thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands in donations uh, by fictional donors. Uh, and in the end, the according law was changed in Slovakia. Or for instance, uh, well, we uh, found out that some of the contracts that Slovakia has been releasing over the last two years have been changed by the government to suit the circumstances of how the wares and goods were actually delivered, which is not okay. Or we were able to stop a contract, cancel, get a con con contract cancel that was related to a EU funds project worth 120 million euros. And the, uh, the money was supposed to go to a company uh, through a public procurement, which was only an announced on a notice board at the ministry, which is obviously not okay. So these are the things that we are trying to do. And basically, uh, well, there, there was the time, you know, when, when we feel that we had the freedom to experiment, to do whatever we wanted, when the open data movement was like being born. And there, the possibilities were really endless. But right now, like there's, you know, uh, Politicians are starting to notice that something like this is happening. Sometimes it may be good because it helps opening things up. In other cases, uh, for instance, in Slovakia, it's not that good because it only means that the schemes are getting more and more sophisticated. And so what we feel uh, we have to do is that it is a time to stop only playing around, but to focus more on, on impact, on, on results. And, uh, well, I think we all need to think twice because the you know, the time has really come for us to focus more on, on what we are trying to achieve here. And uh, I really believe that sometimes we think about technologies and about data like something that's really great, but in the end it's only a, a means to an end. Sometimes we think it's the end in itself and that's a mistake. So basically it's only a tool and we need to use the tool in a right way. So I want to urge all of you uh, to think about this, to examine what we're doing, to, to assess whether 
we really have impact with what we're doing. Uh, and to not forget what are the goals that we are trying to drive with the technologies that we are using. Uh, I'd like also to urge those of us who are not uh, dealing in policy making and advocacy to choose the right way, you know, to do their own thing, but to think about us, uh, advocates and watchdogs, and to make their tools as usable for us as possible, because guys, you're gonna save us so much time, and we, you know, we need to be really quick. And, well, I hope we'll succeed in what we're trying to achieve here. I hope we'll succeed in bringing more meaningful results because like this, these tools are really powerful and I believe we can do this. Uh, I'll be happy to talk about it with you anytime. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>